So chapter 5 starts us off with factoring. And in the first section, we look at the most basic case. Is there anything common between my polynomial terms that I can take out of everything? But before we get there, we want to talk about what does it mean to factor something. So to factor a polynomial is to express it as a product. So we want to take some factors being added or subtracted together and turn it into multiplication, which feels kind of funny, but we can do it. And a factor of a polynomial, P, is a polynomial that can be used to express P as a product. So we both use it as a verb and a noun. A factor is a chunk of the polynomial, and then to factor it is to write it as that product. And a factorization of a polynomial is an expression, an expression that names the polynomial as a product. So after it's been factored, we're looking at the factorization of the polynomial. A lot of terms, but it'll make sense once we practice with few. So again, the most basic case, is there anything common between all of these factors that we can take out of all of them? the greatest common, so the largest thing that they share in common, I want to take out of all of them. So, first example, we want to find greatest common factor of these four terms. So what do they all share in common that I can take out? So we'll look at just the coefficients first. We'll piece it, piece it down. Of the coefficients, so just the numbers out on the front, what is the greatest common factor, or the thing that they all share in common, that I could factor out of all of them? So, 3, I could take a 3 out of 15, 3 out of 12, 3 out of 27, 3 out of 3. Anything larger than that, we couldn't be taking it out of this term, so that should be a good indication. And for the variables. So looking at the factors of x that I have, I've got five of them up here being multiplied, four, three being multiplied, two being multiplied. So the greatest number that they all share in common that I could take out of all of them is going to be two. Because I can take two factors out of five, two out of four, two out of three, two out of two, anything larger than that. And again, this guy causes some problems. So x squared is the largest that we can take out. So all together, greatest common factor, and we write it shorthand, GCF, you'll see that a lot in math, is going to be 3x squared. It's the largest thing that they all share in common that I could take out of every single one, write it as a product. All right, same story down here. Greatest common factor of these two terms. So... We'll break it down again. Coefficients first. Just the numbers out on the front. What do they share in common that I could take out of both? So they're both even, at least a 2. But we can go even larger than that. 4. I can take a 4 out of 12 and a 4 out of 16, and I'm still dealing with those whole numbers. And for the variables, how many factors of x can I remove? So this guy has 2 being multiplied together. This guy has 3 factors of x being multiplied together. So the greatest that they share in common is 2. So x squared. So all together, the greatest common factor, or GCF, between these two is 4x squared. Alright. So go ahead and take this next one. Find the greatest common factor of 3y to the 6 negative 5y to the 4th, and 2y squared. So of the coefficients, do they share anything in common that we can take out? Because 3 is prime, 5 is prime, 2 is prime. The only thing that we could take out common between all of them is 1, but that's not going to change anything. So for the coefficients, we didn't have anything that we could take out, but for our variables, it's the largest factor of y that we can take out of every single term. So I've got 6, 4, and 2. So the greatest number that they all share in common is 2. So the greatest common factor of those three terms, y squared. 
Okay. So now we can recognize what the greatest common factor is. Now we'll look at actually factoring it out of a polynomial. But before we do that, we're going to look at these two cases. We know how to do multiplication, so let's hit this one. To get rid of these parentheses, what has to happen? I have to take 3x and distribute it to every single term in this polynomial. So what do we get? 3x times the first term will give me 3x cubed. 3x times 2x. So 3 times 2 will give me 6. x times x is x squared. And 3x times negative 4. Negative 12x. Okay, so we got rid of, we distributed 3x and got rid of the parentheses. But factoring is now looking at the reverse. So you can see, this is what we ended up with here when we multiplied. So pretend that we don't know this. Look in between these three terms like we've been doing. What is the greatest common factor that we can take out of all of these? So what is my GCF, greatest common factor? Between the coefficients, 3, 6, and 12, the largest thing that they share in common is a factor of 3. And x cubed, x squared, x. Largest number that they share in common, one factor. Okay, and you can see what we're doing. We're doing the reverse. We're going backwards. So if I take 3x out of this polynomial, what am I left with? So if I'm taking 3x out, what am I left with inside of the parentheses? So if I take 3 out of 3, I'm left with the 1 on the front. And if I take x out of x cubed, how many am I left with? got x squared left over. You can see what we're getting to up here. But we'll ask again, if I take 3 out of 6, what am I left with? 2. And if I take one factor of x out of x squared, I've got one left. And if I take 3 out of negative 12, look at that negative 4, and x out of x, those are going to be gone. So, we've done that. We've done the reverse. We can distribute by multiplying and get our polynomial. And we can do the reverse. We can factor out the greatest common factor and see what we have left. Do we get to the original? Yeah. And we can always check. After we factored, we have the ability to distribute it back in, make sure we get to our original polynomial. So let's put that into practice now. After we've factored something, we can always multiply, distribute it back in to check and make sure that we factored correctly. We have to get back to the original. So let's work on a few. So looking common between these two terms, what do they share in common that I can factor out of both, that I can take out of both? A 7. And when we do that, what are we left with? So if I take 7 out of 7, I'm going to be left with 1, and I still have x squared left over because we didn't factor out any common x's because we don't have one over here. And if I take 7 out of 14, I'm left with 2. Okay, so we think we factored greatest common factor out of everything. And to check, let's distribute, make sure we get back to the original. So if I put it back in, 7 times x squared, I get 7x squared. And 7 times 2, I get 14. Did we factor correctly? Yes. Okay, we always have that check to fall back on. Part B, common between these two that I can factor out of both. Let's look at the coefficients first. So between 16 and 20, what can we take out of both of them? Factor of 4. And between the variables now, I've got three factors being multiplied here and two being multiplied there. So the greatest that they share in common, two factors. So we can take out 4x squared. What are we left with? So 16 divided by 4. Got 4 left. And I took two factors out of my three factors. So I still have one hanging out. And if I take 4 out of 20, I'm left with 5. x squared out of, out of x squared, 
we're done. And again, we can check. 4x squared, 4x plus 5. If we distribute back in, 4 times 4, 16x cubed, and 20x squared. Did we get there? We did. Okay. So one thing that I want to chat about, what if you didn't recognize that we could take a 4 out of there? What if you thought we could only take a 2 out? I'm just going to show you, you can still get there by taking out smaller factors. It's just we're going to require a little bit more work. So let's say I didn't notice that I could take out a 4. They're both even, so I know I could take out a 2. So let's just say I took out a 2 instead and still an x squared. What are we left with then? 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. I still have that one factor of x. And 20 divided by 2 10. And we took out all of the x squared. So, in the end we always want to ask, can we factor any farther? If we take out the greatest common factor, in the end we're done. But in this case, we just took out a 2. Looking between, is there anything in common between these two that we can take out of both? They're both even, so a factor of 2. So if I take out another factor of 2, what am I left with? 8 divided by 2, 4. 10 divided by 2, 5. And if we simplify this now, 2 times 2 is 4. Did we get the same? As when we factored out the greatest common factor. Yeah, it just took us 3 steps to get there instead of 2. So if you can't recognize the greatest thing to take out of everything, Start small and build from there. Just make sure in the end, we double check. Is there anything common between these two that we could take out? No. So we shoot for the largest. If you can't see it, start small, build from there. All right, part C. Between all of my coefficients, largest factor I can take out of all of them is a 3. And how many factors of x? Do they all share in common? 2. So, what are we left with when we take 3x squared out of each of these terms? So, 3 out of 15, I'm left with 5. How many factors of x? Had 5, took out 2, got 3 left. 3 out of negative 12, negative 4. How many x's do we have left? 2. 3 out of 27, 9. And I took 2 out of my 3 factors, so I've got 1 left. And 3 out of negative 3, I've got a negative 1. x squared out of x squared, done. And we always want to look in the end. Anything in common that we can take out? No. So we took out the greatest common factor in the beginning. We can even have mixed variables. Still behaves the same. We just have to look at the individual pieces. So between all the coefficients, largest thing we can take out of all of them, 2. And we'll take a look at the p's next. Largest factor of p that they all share in common. We've got 1, 1, and 2. So they all share 1 in common. And then looking at the y's, I've got 3, 2, and 1. So how many do they all share in common? 1. So that's our greatest common factor. And what are we left with if we take that out of each individual term? So 2 out of 14, I'm left with 7. Got 1p left over. How many y's left over? 2. Because if we distribute, we want to make sure we get back up here. If we take 2 out of negative 8, I'm going to negative 4. And I took 1p out, so that's taken care of. And I took 1y, so I still have 1 left. And 2 out of 2, I have 1 left over, and I took my p and my y out already. So we need that placeholder. We can always check. If we distribute back in, do we get to our original trinomial there? All right, so take these next three, factor them, then check by multiplying. Distribute it back in. Make sure you get back to the original. So common between these two terms that we can take out of both, 
was a factor of x. When we did that, what were you left with? We got one factor and three. To check off on the side, what did you do? Distribute it back in, and did we get there? x squared plus 3x. Got there. Always had that check with math. For part B, common between all of these terms that we can take out of everything. Now I'll share 7 in common. And how many factors of x? 3. It's always the smallest number of times we see the factor. So if we take that out of every single term, 7 out of 35, we got 5, 7, 6, 5, 4 factors of x left. 7 out of negative 49, we've got negative 7 x cubed. 7 out of 14, and we've got 2 left. How many factors of x? 2. And 7 out of negative 63, negative 9. And I took x cubed out of x cubed, so I don't have any variable terms there. All right. And to check, if we distribute it back in, do we get here? So we get 35 x to the 4, 5, 6, 7. Check. 7 times 7, negative 49, the negative's on there. 3 plus 3 is 6. 7 times 2 is 14. 3 plus 2 is 5. 7 times negative 9, negative 63 and x cubed times 1 x cubed. We get there. Okay, very last one. Common between all of these that we can take out. So between all of the constants, we can take out 3. Of all of the x's, smallest number I have, 2 of them, and my y's smallest number, 1. So if we take that out of my first term, what are we left with? 3 x squared y. If I take 3 out of negative 15, I get negative 5, x, y, and I'm taking this entire factor out of this thing, so I'm left with 1. And again, can we distribute and get back to the original? Check and make sure. 